Hi, my name is Dan Knott, and I'm here to tell you about my book, Hidden Systems. So have you ever wondered how the internet works, or how electricity is produced, or how even in a city like New York, there seems to be enough water for everyone all the time? These are some of the questions that I look into in Hidden Systems. Hidden systems are the things that we don't really notice until they're not working. And today, we hear about a lot of things that aren't working but we're often missing the history and the context to really understand them. This book focuses on providing that context by telling the story of three crucial hidden systems that we're all probably relying on right now. The internet, the electric grid, and water. The idea for hidden systems started while I was a student at the Center for Cartoon Studies. I was drawing comics about the metaphors we use to describe and imagine the internet. Things like a cloud, and cyberspace, or a superhighway, and of course, a series of tubes. And I was interested in how these metaphors might keep us from understanding what the internet actually is, from seeing that the internet is very physical and it's actually all around us. And I found that comics worked really well for showing not only how we imagine something, but for how it actually works to shed light on the aspects we see every day and the more hidden elements. And I use comics to tell the most interesting stories that I've found about how the internet developed in a way that only a visual medium can. For instance, rather than moving through the air like our metaphors would suggest, the data on the internet mostly travels in the form of light, using undersea cables the size of garden hoses. These cables often trace the same routes as the colonial telegraph lines laid by the British Empire in the 1800s. And today, they wire together continents to move information at close to the speed of light. The second part of this book is on electricity. How we imagine it. How we built a grid that spans a continent. And how this amazing system that provides us with so much is also causing wildfires in California and is one of the main systems responsible for the climate crisis. And when it comes to climate change, a lot of the issues that we're dealing with have to do with there being too much water or not enough. In the third part of Hidden Systems, the scope of the book expands to look at all the creative and imaginative ways we've gone about managing water throughout human history. And, most importantly, how these ways of managing water interact with Earth's own hidden systems, especially what that means in an era today of rapidly shifting climates. So I had so much fun researching this book, and especially coming up with creative ways to illustrate complex topics. Working on this book taught me to notice my surroundings, to see the things that normally appear invisible to us. In some cases, it allowed me to go on field trips to explore the unseen systems that structure our lives and see them close up hand. I drew this book traditionally, planning, writing, and drawing on paper, and made the final artwork in ink. I colored these pages digitally in a style influenced by drawings from my sketchbook that were done with marker and colored pencil. I worked on this book almost daily for four years, across three different studios, and I'm very proud of how it turned out. And because I'm also a teacher, I'm looking forward to getting back into classrooms and libraries to talk about what I've learned. When I set out to make this book, I wanted it to be a tool to help provide some of the missing context for so many of the overwhelming problems we face today. But most importantly, it's also a book about imagination, both the role it played in creating these systems and its importance in helping us find a better future. Thanks for watching everyone, and I'm so excited to share Hidden Systems with you in the spring of 2023.